Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my video tutorial for single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Pananta package. It is a Python package to align cells along differentiation trajectories. So first, let's know the order packages for today's analysis. So next, we can load the data. We are going to use the bone marrow sample data for today's demonstration. You can use this link to download the data. The data was provided by the PanNet online tutorial. So I downloaded the data already. So we can just read the data in. As a data, let's read the data in. You can see at the moment for the data, we have 4,142 cells, 16,106 pins. We don't have any other data information for this data set. So to see the cells, we can run a standard scan type workflow. First, we can normalize the data. Then next, we can log transform the data. You will realize the difference that we are going to use the log transform method from the Pananta package. Then we can find the variable features. We can follow the online tutorial to just find the 1,500 variable features. Then we can run PCA. After that, we can compute the labor graph. Then we can run UMAP. The online tutorial didn't run the latent cluster step. I'm going to run the latent cluster step. Then we can see the cell clusters. In the last step for the SCANPI workflow, we can realize the cell clusters by the latent clusters. So let's run the standard SCANPI workflow to process the data. Okay, you can see because we only have cells below 5000 in this data set, so we can quickly run the Standard SCANPI workflow, you can see now we have nine cell clusters in this data set. So now we can prepare the data for planetary package analysis. First, we need to run the diffusion map. If we run this function, it will determine the diffusion map of the data, and then estimate of the low dimensional phenotypic manifold of the data. So we can run the diffusion maps, set the n component as 5. Let's run. So next we can use the determine multi scales space function to estimate the low dimensional embedding based on the EG gaps. So we can run this function. Now we can realize the diffusion maps. When we run the diffusion maps, we set the n component as 5. So if we plot the diffusion map for the components, we will have 5 images. Let's run. You can see we generated the, the diffusion map from component 0 to component 4. The Diffusion map for the component 2 will represent the cell differentiation trajectories. So, planetary package uses the magic imputation method to impute the data for realization and determine the gene expression trends. So, we can run the magic imputation for the data. Let's run. So following run the magic imputation function, we should add a layer of the magic input data into the A data. Let's have a look at the A data.
you can see after analysis, we have a layer called the magic imputed data. And also we have the observations, latent cluster, swearable for highly wearable genes. And the other analysis we just performed above. So now we can visualize the gene expression use the UMAP for the layer of magic imputed data. We are going to realize gene CD34. It is a mark gene for the bone marrow stem cells, and the MPO is a mark gene for myeloid cells. Then, cat one is a mark gene for erythroid precursors, and the IRF is a mark gene for dendritic cells. So we can plot the gene expression for four mark genes. Let's run. You can see we generated the four plot CD34 labels cell canasters here and the MPO1 label cells in this area and the GET1 labels the erythroid precursors. Then IRF8 labels the dendritic cells. We know in the bone marrow the cell differentiation started from the CD34 positive stem cells, then generated the erythroid, monocyte, and the dendritic cells. So next, we can run the Planeta package to determine the trajectory. As I said just now, in the bone marrow, we know where are the stem cells and uh, where are the erythroid monocyte and the dendritic cells. So we can determine the terminal state by our knowledge to set the terminal state parameters. Because we know the dendritic cells and the monocyte erythroid are in the terminal differentiation stage. So we can set the dendritic cells, monocyte and the erythroid as terminal state, and we can select uh, three cells from each cell canister. So let's set the terminal state for three cell canisters. Then we can have a look at where are the cells on the UMAP. Let's run. You can see we set this cell in the erythroid canister, and then this cell in the monocyte and the next cell in the dendritic cell canister at the terminal state for three different cell canisters. So we set a three terminal state, then next we can determine the start cells because we know the CD34 are stem cells and they are in this cell canister. So we can select a cell in the CD34 positive cell canister as the start cells. Then we can run Planeta analysis to determine the, the trajectory and the cell fate for the terminal state cells. So let's run Planeta analysis now. So after the analysis, we can realize the result. The planetary analysis generates three different results. First one is the pseudo time, then the second one is entropy. This is the quantity measurement for the differentiation potential for each cell. Then the third result is the terminal state probabilities. This is the cell matrix data to show the terminal states. So let's plot the result. You can see the first one is the pseudo term. As we know, the cell differentiation started from the CD34 positive cells to the erythroid monocyte and the dendritic cells. Then the second one is the differentiation potential. So the CD34 positive cells 
has high potential for differentiation, then other cell types are in the terminal stage for differentiation. Then here we show the terminal stage for the erythroid cell cluster, dendritic cell cluster, and the monocyte cluster. Because they are in the terminal stage of differentiation, so they are labeled in the red color. We can also realize the individual cells for the terminal stage probability. For example, we can show three cells for their terminal state probability. Let's run. You can see the first cell shows no terminal state probability for each cell types. So this cell probably in the CD34 cell cluster. Then the second cell and the third cell show high terminal state probability in monocyte. So the second cell and the third cell should be in the monocyte cell cluster. So we can highlight the three cells on the U map and see where they are. Let's run the cells in the U map. You can see the first cell is in the CD34 cell cluster. Then the second and the third cell are in the monocyte cell cluster. That's why they have the high terminal state probability in the monocyte cell cluster. So we finished the, the terminal state analysis. Next, we can compute the gene expression trends over the pseudo term using the planetary trends. To compute the gene expression trends, first we need to select cells associated with a specific branch of the pseudo trajectories. We know we have three trajectories in this data set from CD34 positive cells to erythroid to monocyte and to dendritic cells. So let's select the branch cells first. After the branch selection, we can reunite the selected branches. Let's run. You can see we have three branches. The first one is cells from CD34 to erythroid. You can see that's CD34 to the erythroid cell cluster. The second one should be from CD34 to dendritic cells. This is the branch for dendritic cells. Then the third one is the branch for monocyte. You can see it is from the CD34 positive cells to monocytes. So we selected the three branches. Now we can realize the trajectory on the U map for each branch. Here we are going to just use the erythroid as an example to see the trajectories. Let's run. You can see we generated the trajectory for the erythroid cell cluster. You can see the trajectory from CD34 positive cells to the erythroid cell cluster. We can use the same function to plot the trajectories to add more information. Here we are going to use the dendritic cells as an example. We can count the cells by planetary entropic result. And we can set how many arrows we can put in the trajectory and the arrows color and the other parameters, for example, the head length and the head width for the arrows. Let's run this one to demonstrate the trajectory to dendritic cells. So you can see now we count the cells by the entropy result. Then we also add the arrow numbers and the arrow color and the arrow head length and width for the trajectory labeling. So now we can use the computer gene trends function to determine the gene expression trends along different lineages.
Let's uh, run the code to determine the, the gene expression trend. So following the analysis, we can use some gene as examples to realize the determined trends for each gene. Here we are going to use the CD34, MPO, GET1, and the IRF8 gene as examples again to show their expression trends. Let's run the plot. You can see for CD34, it gradually decreases in the erythroid dendritic cells and the monocytes. Then for the MPO, you can see it gradually increases its expression in the monocyte. Then GAT1 increases its expression through the differentiation in the erythroid delta cluster and the IRF8 increase its expression in dendritic cells. If you want, you can also use the heat map to show the gene expression trends. We can run the heat map for four genes again. You can see we generated the heat map. The first one is for the erythroid cell cluster. We know MPO gradually increase expression in the erythroid. You can see it has the highest density for the red color. Then CD34 decrease its expression through cell differentiation. The second one is for the dendritic cells. Then we know the IRF8 increase its expression in dendritic cells. Other three genes decrease their expression in dendritic cells. Then the last one for the monocyte, you can see here MPO and also IRF8 increase their expression in the monocyte. So finally, we can connect the genes based on their expression trend. Because we have 16,000 genes here, for demonstration, we can just run the first 1,000 gene. So we can set the gene as the first 1,000 gene, and then connect the genes based on their gene expression trend. For the demonstration, we are going to connect the genes in the erythroid cell cluster. If you want, you can try other cell clusters, such as the dendritic cells, monocytes. Let's run. After the gene clustering, we can realize the gene clusters. Because we ran the analysis for the erythroid cell cluster, so here we need to set the Argument of the erythroid cell cluster. Let's realize the gene clusters. You can see we have eight cell cluster. You can see cluster zero, one, five. They increase their expression in erythroid cell cluster. Cluster three, seven decrease their expression through erythroid cell differentiation, then cluster 6 first increase their expression, then decrease their expression. So now we finish the demonstration, we can save the result. Let's save the result now. Okay, that's today's video tutorial for the plant package to analyze cell differentiation trajectories. You can see as demonstrated by the bone marrow cell differentiation, we can use this package to analyze cell differentiation and determine their cell fit. So I just quickly go through the online tutorial. If you want to know more details, you can go to GitHub to see more details about this package and also read their publication on the nature biotechnology. I'm going to stop from here. I hope this video tutorial could help your data analysis. If you like my video, please share my videos with your friends. Thank you.